Windows Defender is an amazing piece of tech and people are just not utilizing it and it's free as part of the operating system. This video shows you a bit more about how to get the best out of Windows Defender. So we just wanted to put out a quick video around Windows Defender because I appreciate that a lot of people will still be using third-party AV. And I think we all know that we end up using Windows Defender um, because ultimately we uh, forget to put the third-party AV on and Windows Defender will kick in in the background. I've just come off of the Cyber UK show here um, in England and um, Windows Defender seems to be all powerful and is being used more and more. Now, you do have to have those more advanced business premium uh, um, selections within 365 to be able to control and run this um, centrally. But all of the top cybersecurity advisors uh, that we uh, work with and in and around the industry here in, in the UK are very much on pro uh, Windows Defender. And I think it's becoming one of the best in the industry now. And it's pretty much free outside of the box as part of a standard Windows operating system. And the actual advanced subscriptions are fairly reasonable from a price perspective. So I just wanted to run through a couple of bits um, just to how does RoboShadow uh, interact with Windows Defender? And what do people need to be thinking about when using Windows Defender? So RoboShadow will manage um, third-party AV as well as Windows Defender as well. So what you need to do to get through a penetration test or a good cybersecurity assessment, you need to demonstrate that your antivirus is up to date and enabled. They're the two things um, that you need to be able to demonstrate and usually some kind of operations around it. So we will also within um, uh, the platform show that any particular threats that has come up and they can be sent out via an alert as well. And um, the more stringent security frameworks now are demanding that you're basically having some kind of SecOps process on a daily basis to be able to manage and interact with that data and certainly report on it. So that's the kind of standard Windows Defender sort of anti-malware piece. But as we know, because Microsoft know their own operating system very, very well, um, the advanced versions of Defender will effectively look at that whole kill chain end to when if someone's trying to move laterally, there will be the logs and the analysis um, to be able to understand what happened. And obviously, um, Defender will try, to, will try and block that also. So that is definitely something um, that we feel that people should look at before looking at a third party AV selection. Now, again, I know people have their favorites and MSPs will have a certain selection that they have, but organizations like Huntress have rose to power just on the back of that Microsoft platform. And because it's become ubiquitous in most people's um, uh, 365 packages now, it's definitely worth taking a look. So the other elements that are in there, um, open firewalls or, or the firewall, Windows Defender firewall, that's just Windows firewall it's been the same ever for the last 10 or 20 years or whatever um, it's still good and it's still the same product and they are evolving it over time it is recommended now or that we need to have that on pretty much you need a really good exception reason to not have that enabled these days but the bit we're, we've got another video on this but I'll do this very quickly now uh, we'll link to this um, in, in uh, uh, wherever you're seeing this video um, but the ransomware piece in Windows Defender just boggles the mind with me We've tested it to make sure it stops ransomware. I don't want to be legally, um, um, I don't want to be legally obligated with that statement, but we've put it through its pasted and it will stop ransomware. We use it ubiquitously with our clients and it doesn't seem to have much impact with the actual desktop itself. So why Microsoft um, don't enable it for uh, by default, I have no idea. Here within the RoboShadow platform, uh, you can go ahead and see what's uh, not been enabled and you can actually fix that and get that rolled out as well. Uh, we don't know why Microsoft are not doing that. We wouldn't recommend doing car blanche across the whole organization, um, but um, just roll it out in stages. But um, if anyone knows why Microsoft, uh, we've tried to ask them and they won't answer the question, why they don't enable it by default. Maybe it's false positives, I don't know. Please get in touch uh, and let us know. So thank you very much for watching.